A good Chodesh year, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Math Rebbe. I'm your host, Daniel. If it were Mutter to bet, I would wager that if you went into a base medrash and asked anyone what their favorite general studies subject was, a large majority would say something other than math, including the ones who choose E for none of the above. Why E? Because it's four subjects, history, math, science, and English, so none of the above is the fifth option. Come on, we just started the entire series and you've already fallen asleep? The idea of this series is to show just how practical math can be, no matter what field you want to go into, including sitting in Kolo. In this video in particular, I'm going to prove to you that it is a mitzvah to learn math, even when you're not applying it to a blav gemara. Before we begin, however, for those of you who keep the first half of Sphira, I would recommend muting your speakers for about, oh, 20 seconds. Those of you who don't start until Lagba Omer are good for another few episodes. <laughs> The mission in Perkiavo says, Am Rabbi Lazar Chisma, Rabbi Lazar Chisma said, Kinim Upischi Nida, bird offerings and counting Nida cycles, Hain Hain Gufi Halachos, those are the main parts of Halacha, Tekufos Vigamachios, Astronomy, and I'll leave Gamachia and translate for the time being, Paparos Lachachma, our appetizer for wisdom. Some of Farshim translate Paparos as spices or dessert, but the meaning remains the same. The main thing to focus on is Torah and not intellectual pursuits such as astronomy. Story time. Once Rabbi Shua and Rabbi Gamliel were on a boat, Rabbi Shua brought both bread and flour, whereas Rabbi Gamliel only brought bread. Eventually, Rabbi Gamliel's bread ran out, and he had to rely on Rabbi Shua's flour. Rabbi Gamliel asked him, How do you have the foresight to bring flour? Rabbi Shua replied, Once every 70 years, a star rises that tricks the sailors. I thought that maybe it would trick ours. Rabbi Gamliel asked, You have such knowledge that you have to travel on the high seas for a living? Rabbi Shua responded, Don't worry about me. Worry about your Talmudim on the mainland, Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudgida and Rabbi Lazar Chisma. You know how to calculate the drops in the sea, you don't even have bread to eat or clothing to wear. Immediately upon returning, Rabbi Gamliel promoted them to the head of the academy. Coming back to our Mishnah. Rashi and the Bartanura translate gematria as numerology, assigning numerical values to letters and darshing accordingly. However, based on the above story that briefly mentions Rabbi Lazar Chisma's ability in math and science, Tuziantif interprets gematria as being related to the Greek geometria. Geometry. No, I don't actually know Greek. I just know that that's what, he, what the Tuziantif says. But how can it be that astronomy is an appetizer? The Gmaran Shabbos is harsh words for those who know how to calculate but don't. Read and translate the yellows. Wait, that's my sage directions. Um, I'm Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi, I'm Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Mishon bar Kapara. Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi says in the name of Rabbi Shua ben Levi, who said in the name of bar Kapara. Kol hayadeh l'chashtev b'tkufos v'mazel, s'fein choshev, anyone who knows how to calculate astronomy but doesn't, of Kasvomer ves Poshem Loyabito, Umasa Yadav Lorau. About him, the Pasuk says, and the actions of Hashem they did not heed, and the works of his hands they did not see. Even further, the Gemara says that it's a mitzvah, a mitzvah to learn astronomy. Amr Rishul Bar Nachmani Amr Rabbi Yochanan, Minayin Shem Mitzvah Al Hadam Lachashtev Tikuvus Mazels. Rishul Bar Nachmani said, Name of Rabbi Yochanan, that one must calculate astronomy. And you should guard them and do them because it is your wisdom and knowledge in the eyes of the nations. What wisdom and knowledge do even the nations appreciate? This is astronomy. But how can it be a mitzvah to learn astronomy? We just said it's an appetizer, a spice, a dessert, but certainly not an entree. It must be then, says Tosiantif, that this is what the Mishnah means. Kinim and Pischi Nida are calculations which are inherently mitzvos. Astronomy and geometry, however, are not inherently mitzvos, they're intellectual pursuits. However, it's certainly possible to uplift astronomy and geometry from an intellectual pursuit to an essential part of halacha, 
just as it's possible to take anything physical and uplift it to the spiritual realm. It's for this reason that Rabbi Lazar picked these four topics specifically to show that even though they all share the fact they're math, only two of them at the roots are mitzvahs. Just to illustrate a few other ways math can be used in halacha. Say you're a businessman and you buy and sell fields, and someone comes to you and says he wants to buy X acres of field. You're going to need to know geometry to ensure he gets what he asked for and that you're not cheating him by even a square inch. Thus says the Shulchan Aruch, the Rambam, and the Sefer Chinuch on this coming week's parsha for those of us in Chotz Aretz, yesterday's parsha for those of us in Eretz Israel. The Rambam adds that this particular halacha is even more important than all the halachos of Arias described in this past week's parsha for us, Bnei Gola. So you want to make an Erev to carry between two courtyards separated by a wall X almost tall, and you want to lean ladders against the wall. Are they tall enough? Are they at the proper angle in respect to the wall? Are they far enough away from the wall? As we'll see later in the season, it's not so simple. Say you're building a sukkah, but it's round. Given that its circumference is X, is the area big enough to encompass a sukkah that's kosher? We'll talk about this more later. Say you're planting a vineyard. Is it too close to the neighboring wheat field? It might be an issue of climb. This will also be addressed later in the season. Scissor Benu Yona, you can be learning math just for the fun of it and earn schar and olam haba. How? By having in mind that if you let it, math can help you think, analyze, and solve problems, all useful skills in learning Torah properly. Thus, justice is a mitzvah to eat on Erev Yom Kippur in order to fast on Yom Kippur. It's a mitzvah to learn math in order to learn Gemara. And of course, for those of you interested in going out onto the workforce, math can be useful in many different ways. Moshe makes the obvious point of how math is used in finance, but he adds that even if that's the only reason you're learning math, it's still not Bittal Torah, because learning it prevents you from wasting the time you're not spending learning Torah, since what you're doing is more productive than wasting your time playing video games. Finally, the Rambam says that by observing Hashem in nature, one will come to love and fear Him. Here are five unbelievable equations that will fulfill this directive. Um, let me just pull out my laser pointer. This equation describes what's called the Fibonacci sequence, which can be found in everyday objects such as flowers, pine cones, and Nautilus shells. If you all ask nicely, I might even do a feature on how much time the Chavos Yair, the Rambam, and the Shomo of Chalm spent on this sequence. This equation is used to define sine and cosine functions, which are useful in anything having to do with triangles, as we'll explain at length later in the season. This equation, an excellent example of how mind-boggling physics could be, describes the fact that the faster you go, the slower time will move, a phenomenon called time dilation. This has actually been proven, though any frequent flyers watching this video probably gain at most a second over their entire life over those of us who prefer to keep our feet on terra firma. This equation, the fundamental theorem of calculus, says that the two branches of calculus Integrals, some used to calculate areas and volumes, and derivatives, rates of change, are inverses of each other. We'll talk more about calculus at the end of the season. Finally, this equation describes general relativity, which describes the space-time continuum and how massive things on the scale of planets and galaxies interact with one another. Scientists have yet to figure out how this works with quantum physics, which describes the opposite extreme, how subatomic and atomic particles interact. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and please like, subscribe, and comment if you did. I've included my sources in the video's description, and feel free to check them out. We'll be starting this series with a double header as we proceed to elaborate on apple pie and square roots. Okay, not apple, maybe cherry.